the underground. For the past 10 years, Ferry Corson and Paul Van Dyke have been amongst some of the most successful and consistent dance DJs and producers, gathering crowds of thousands wherever they play. We caught up with Paul Van Dyke and Ferry for a chat about their music and the dawn of the digital age. The reason why I like trends, you know, it's... I love it when people really go off, you know, when, when I see 5,000 people, 10,000 people in front of me, I want them to see, I want them to go nuts, go crazy. Um, I, I'm not saying that you cannot get that vibe with house or techno, but there's something with trance with, because it's so melodic. It's, uh, you know, it's more, instead of groove, it's based on emotion, you know, it's based on melody. So, you know, when you see that, that build up and you see the crowd really respond to it with the arms in the air and the eyes closed and look up like that, it's just, you know, it's something amazing. So, you know, the, the music is very powerful. Um, one, uh, one downside of, of, of trance music, I don't want to say trance events because I really like those, but trance music. Uh, there was, a, <clears throat> there was a, a, a period where it was very much the same. Every track sounded the same. Everybody, all the producers um, used the same sort of presets in their, in the, in their the synthesizers. And so every track sounded the same. And um, it was a bit, it got a bit boring. But now, I think the last year, year and a half, uh, trance music has become really interesting stuff. It's, uh, you know, it, it leans to mi towards minimal, but then with a melodic side to it. Or it leans to like bang on trance, which with some, some great vibes, great melodies. Um, so, you know, there's a, there's a lot more now going on in this one particular genre than, than before. And that's really what I, uh, what I like. Well, I don't really affiliate myself with the trance scene too much, to be honest. And I'm not just saying that because it's like trendy or not trendy. Um, basically, you can see interviews I gave back in 94. Because the thing is, for me, it's all electronic music. And I definitely play things that have trancey elements, but just as much uh, you find techno and break beats and, and, and house and electro and all that in the sets. Because this is what, at the end of the day, is making the whole you know, experience of music interesting. That's one thing. The other thing is if you say the whole sort of like, you know, trancey sound is not really that glamorous in the UK, um, then on the other hand, I don't really understand why then the trance arenas on all the festivals are the biggest ones. Why are the favorite DJs of the people playing that trancey sound? That doesn't really make any sense. So at the end of the day, it's probably coming down to media attention and a certain sort of wrong reflection in the media of a particular musical style. Because at the end of the day, it's like you can go to any of those dance festivals. The biggest tent is always the one where they play the full-on trancey sound. Uh, it, was a, it was a party, there's two rooms. One house room, or minimal, and the other room was about 15,000 people and it was full-on trance room. And I played there and uh, at some point I played my, uh, my track Beautiful. And, uh, all of a sudden, uh, in the breakdown, all the people in the middle, about 5,000 people, uh, went sitting down on their knees. And uh, I was like, well, what's going on? And then when the beat came back in, they all jumped up at the same time. It was really crazy. I've never seen anything like it that big, you know? And then right after that, they, they pulled out uh, a, big, uh, a big banner. I think it must have been eight meters with uh, the logo of my, my, my logo. And uh, it said, uh, they, they quoted uh, the lyrics from the song. It said, everything is beautiful, Argentina will follow you forever. And if you read that and you see that and you see all these people sit on the floor, it's just something, yeah, I really had goosebumps everywhere. It was amazing. I hate it that people think that they can just download everything and you know and they and not and they don't understand why it's harmful. You know, if everybody would just download stuff and none of the producers make any money anymore to put back into their studio, you know, then yeah, if you keep keep doing this and then in a few years time you can forget about listening to music because there won't be any. There's one thing um, that we should never forget. It's not just about an individual artist maybe earning less money if you download the music illegally. It's a very complex setup. 
Because if that artist, that particular one, you know, doesn't make any money from making music anymore, he's not going to be able to buy new synthesizers. So the developers are not going to develop new stuff because they don't have anybody to sell it to. So basically the whole music, the whole creative part of the music is going to die out as well, leading to the fact that music is going to become really boring. And unless we develop other sources of income that are involving the creative process of making music, um, you know, we, we have to find a solution for that. And uh, at the end of the day, I mean, I can just speak for myself. I'm spending hours and hours and weeks and weeks in the studio and, um, you know, trying to do what I do as good as I anyhow can. And then for people to say, it doesn't really mean anything to me, it's worth this, I'm just taking it down, of the net, in, down from the internet. It's kind of, uh, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. The reason why I am what I am today, uh, you know, is because I have eight people working with me. You know, I have to pay these people as well. So it, it you know, it's not as simple as like, oh, there's free music, because yeah. I'm not the I'm not the only one who benefits from it. It's, it's I support eight people with that. So and that's what really what a lot of people, of course, don't see because they don't see the people behind the scenes.